On Fresh TV, we're going tropo for dinner. It is mango time of the year. And dessert. Miles steps up with some epic Asian. Come on! That is good. And close encounters. With right underneath me. Of the salt water kind. G'day, welcome to Fresh TV. Well, Mars, it's nearly a new year. New challenges, new resolutions, that sort of thing. You know what, it's the best part of the year for me, and today I'm gonna to give myself some challenges in the kitchen. What are you up to? I'm going swimming with the dolphins. Awesome. I can't wait. That's brilliant. Hey, do you like spicy food? Yeah, I love it. All right, well, you go and work up an appetite with the dolphins, come back, and I'll have an Asian surprise for you. Great, I can't wait. See you then. Enjoy. Here I am, right in this island, fishing with my boys. Does it get any better than this? It's not long now, my little bloke's hooked on his first rotto fish. He's loving it. So, Simon, mate, last time I was here, you cooked me lunch. That's right. And I got very jealous when you started telling me about all these fish you caught the night before. And I was like, where's my invite? <laughs> and you did say, and true to your word, you said you'd take me fishing next time I'm over in Rotnet. It's a glorious day for it, and as you can see, they're right there. We just need to get them up here. <laughs> so uh, if we get them up here, I'll cook you lunch today, is that right? That works for me. Is that how it works? No, absolutely. How are you, Tim? G'day, Miles. How are you? Pretty good, mate. Hey, listen, I'm doing a, uh, a dish, a Vietnamese chicken dish. Uh, I need some Asian ingredients. Now, let me know if I'm barking up the wrong tree here. Uh, lychees. Mate, you've come to the right shop. Super sweet, super tasty, new season lychees. Just over there, mate. Absolutely fantastic. So no Asian greengrocer. It's all here. All here. All in one shop, mate. Wow, it's Australian lychees. Yep. Time to change. 100% Australian lychees. These look good too. Fresh. Mate, that is impressive. Um, one more thing. Uh, chicken. Boneless chicken thighs. Boneless yep. chicken. Yep. Just over this way, mate. Beauty. Thanks, right. bud. Cheers, buddy. Uh, buyers go to the markets every day and, and look for interesting and exciting new lines that we can uh, bring into the shop and make sure that we try and get as many WA produce lines as we can. So we're really looking for something a little bit interesting and different for our shops. Wembley is a very large supermarket and we carry here close to 30,000 lines. Uh, a lot more lines than you'll find in a uh, Woolworths or a Coles or an Aldi. And I will need one of those. Yeah, I reckon I've got what I need. I guess I'll go back to the house and I'll get started. You cooked for me before? Certainly did. It's my turn. It's good for you, mate. Beautiful. This is, um, let's do a little bit of Asian flavour through this one. Put nice. some coriander nice. in there. Roll him over. Do the other side as well. Oh, I love kaffir lime. Oh, it's gorgeous. So that's what we're going to do with that one. Beautiful. And on top of that, we're going to, underneath I should say, we're going to do some asparagus. Lovely. So just some barbecued asparagus with that as well. I've got a little salsa happening here. Because it is mango time of the year. It's mango season. So that's we're going to do a little mango salsa. Got a little bit of chilli and some coriander um, stems finely chopped in there. Got a little bit of fish sauce. It's a fantastic seasoning. Add a little bit of sugar there as well. We got some lime juice there as well. Nice. Going to put a bit of that in there. This will get really nice. So we'll give that a bit of a mix around there so we got oh. to dissolve that sugar. Yeah, you smell that already. That's beautiful. It's good, isn't it? Okay. And in that, we're just going to have some fresh mango. It's that time of the year. A bit of red capskin, a bit of red onion as well. Fresh whole leaves there as well. I just, I'm just going to put it all. I Chuck love it, coriander. Get it in there. Get it in there. <laughs> I love coriander. So just give that a mix. We'll just let this sort of seep into each other and really get all the flavours coming together. Okay, so we're going to put the asparagus down and get that going first. So I'll just put it on raw. I didn't bother blanching it first because you might have a little Christmas anyway, a little yeah. bit of seasoning. Yeah. We'll just grab a few of the extra spices and herbs and so forth. I'm going to stick that on at that. Yeah, a bit more flavour. Yeah, just trying to get as much flavour through this as possible. So these are located around the island. Yeah, various Free beaches and um, under uh, picnic shelters like this, so anyone can rock up and catch your feed and cook it or just bring something it. over and That's throw on the barbie. That's sensational. So good, and it's free. Just push a button, away push a you button go. and away you go. So fishing trip this morning, mate. I must admit, I think the kids did better than us. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but they did a lot better than you, mate. So. What? <laughs> 
Go next, home, go home, practice, and let's um, give that a secret. Better luck next time. Let's give it a secret, shall we? Mate, look at that. We're getting some nice colour. It's beautiful colour. Those flavours are coming through now. You can smell those, the, those smells. Oh, sensational. Those Asian herbs are just. Oh, mate, I reckon. I reckon we're good to go. Yep. Would you call that? I'd call that. All right. Well, there you go, Simon. Payback. This is called Good Karma. Good hopefully, Karma. Hopefully it's good. You can tell me in a second. Well, mate, if it tastes half as good as it looks, it's going to be fantastic. Oh. Well done, Chef. Half a chance? Half a chance. Plus yeah. a bit more. Oh, good. <laughs> brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And you never know, you might see me down your neck of the woods. Look us up if you do, mate. I think I owe you a couple of feeds. <laughs> Today I'm in Bunbury at Kumbana Bay and while Miles is hopefully making me something delicious to eat, I'm about to squeeze into a wetsuit and jump off the side of a boat into the freezing cold water and I can't wait. I'm on a swim with the dolphins tour and it looks like these guys are already feeling pretty friendly today they've made an appearance. The dolphins are in great form. See all that thrashing? This one's caught an octopus for breakfast. As we head out into the bay, there are dolphins all around us. Well, there they are. They're coming so close to the boat, and I just saw the baby flick its tail up. Sleek, blue-grey and playful, there's something magic about every sighting. Um, our research team's out every day, we're out every day, and we're learning all the time. We're watching the dolphins, we're taking photos. Phil Coulthart is a marine biologist with the Dolphin Discovery Centre. He's been studying the Kumbana Bay dolphins for 15 years. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've got personalities. Yeah. Uh, some of them are local, so we see them all year round. So I've, I've got a dolphin that is my personal favourite, by the way. You'll have to show uh, me. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's been here since I started. He was one year old when I started. So he keeps an eye on you then? He comes over all the time and plays with us. His name you. is Osho, so if we see Osho today, I'll point him out for okay, you. Cool. We stop at one of the dolphins' favourite play spots. Then it's just a matter of letting them come to us. And when they do, it's incredible. Great. They came so close. And the little babies are so cute. There was a calf out there that's about nine months old. I can't wait to get back in. The young ones, are the, the babies, they're all yeah. sort of guarded by their mums a little bit, but they do have a bit of fun together as well. So they'll play while mum has a rest. Like a creche or a babysitting yeah, service yeah. with mom's sisters. They are. They're right there, yeah. Hello, yeah. So we've got a, a lo lovely group here at the moment. They're, they're actually uh, very, very curious. You can see they came right to the boat. The Dolphin Discovery Centre is a not for profit organisation. They rely on donations and for the day to day running of the place, volunteers like Heidi, who's from London. So you have to look out for the dolphins and make sure that uh, people can see them so you point them out. Uh, also, you get to ring the bell if they come in, and then you uh, all stand in a line in the interaction zone and they come swim through you. You don't have this in the UK. At our next stop, Phil runs into his old mate, Osho, and like a dolphin whisperer, he dives and swims. Phil, that was amazing. They were actually playing with you. They came up to yeah. you specifically to say hello. Well, that was my favourite. That was Osho. That's the one I was telling you about this morning. He's, he's, he knows me, obviously, 15 years. Yeah. He was only one when I started, yeah. so we're happy to find a bit of a play. We did some spins. We're whistling, we're talking to each other. Well, thanks heaps, Phil. That was just a beautiful experience. No problem. <laughs> Glad you came. Food trucks and pop-up events are all the rage in Perth at the moment, and today I'm down at Embargo Bar. So let's go check it out. Have a look at this. There's hundreds of people all dining outside and really enjoying themselves. I've noticed a massive difference about the way people are dining now here in Perth. They're looking for a casual offering with fresh tasting food. You've probably seen in the last three or four years um, a lot more of the South American sort of flavoured trucks, the Argentinian, Brazilian sort of street food. Our inspiration is more New Orleans, Caribbean. I'm from Haiti myself, spent some time in New Orleans and it's been it's been awesome. I couldn't ask for anything else right now. Yeah, the food was really good. I liked it and it was so cool how it comes down to this little like cardboard thing and you get to sit down and eat it on the grass. 
it's, it's bloomed over the last 12 months. It came from about 20 of us in Perth to about 220 of us right now. I think you're going to keep on seeing it grow because I think people are steering away from the fixed site locations and, and seeing the advantages of being a, a mobile vendor, um, being on a plonky truck down where the people are, rather than having the people having to get the people to come to you. The, the, the consumer is a lot more smarter these days. Um, so they're a bit more conscious about what they're buying. Um, and then, like I said before, it's just not chicken rolls and dim sims. You're looking actually looking for a more healthy option out of a food truck. People just like enjoy going up to a food truck. They enjoy eating outside. Like, look at this. Look at this setting. Um, it's better than, you know, sitting in a restaurant. Um, probably because the weather is such a nice day today and such a beautiful open space. Um, great atmosphere on a Friday night, it's nowhere else, especially for summer, like everyone loves it. It's better being outside than inside, so it's good. It's been a great few weeks down here at the South Perth foreshore, but the embargo is now at Elizabeth Quay. So next time you get a chance, get down and check out some of Perth's latest and greatest pop-up venues. Rianne whips up a tropical treat. A little bit of Brazil from me to you. Hey honey, I think you're gonna need this. And the little piece of America you'll only see here. That's next on Fresh TV. This segment of Fresh TV is brought to you by WA Clean Skin Cellars. Welcome to the stunning winning appliances showroom kitchen where today I'm taking you to Brazil where I'm going to show you how to make Brazilian kindins. Now this sounds a little bit crazy but we do need 12 eggs for this so it's a full dozen at least it's easy to shop for. We are going to separate them so you want to get a nice method going because you do have quite a few to work through. The easiest way that I find to separate the eggs is just tap it on the bench and it leaves a nice little thumbprint ready for you to get your thumbs in there and separate this out. We'll get in there, hand and all, and let the whites just fall through your fingers, leaving a nice plump little yolk ready to go. One of our most important ingredients is our coconut milk. This is just the milk, not the cream. We've got some passion fruit pulp. This is in syrup, so if you use fresh passion fruit pulp, you might need to add a little bit more sugar. Very important. Next up, desiccated coconut. To sweet, we've got caster sugar, and the vanilla bean paste. And lastly, and it sounds funny putting it in a dessert, but you do want to be adding a touch of salt. This enhances all of the flavours in there, the vanilla bean, the passion fruit, the coconut. From here, all we need to do is whisk this together. And once there's no lumps of ingredients other than that desiccated coconut, we're ready to pour it into our moulds. To line the moulds for our dessert, brush some unsalted butter, right the way around some little ramekins. We're going to give it a little bit more assistance and flavour by adding some sugar to the lining. So for this one we just roll it into one buttered mould into the other. And then from there we've got some perfect coverage. And then we go straight on and roll it into the next. Just give your mixture a little bit of a whisk before you pour your moulds, because the passion fruit seeds are going to want to sink to the bottom in between batches. And perfect. All we need to do now is get some hot water from the kettle, pour it down the side, and what that does is just create a water bath. As long as it's halfway up, you know that it's going to just protect the bottom section of these desserts and not split the eggs. They're ready to go into the oven. And they'll be ready in about 30 minutes. Today's Fresh TV Kitchen is found in a Peter Stannard home. And for more inspirational homes with amazing kitchens, go to stannardgroup.com.au. I'm going to take things up a notch today. I'm going to cook with two of my favourite ingredients. Lots of chilies, lots of garlic. Barbecued Vietnamese chicken thighs served on a salad, an Asian salad, with papaya, with cashew nuts, coriander, mint, lychees. All balanced out with an Asian dressing. Ambitious, I'm up for the challenge. First things first, our chicken. We're gonna make our own marinade with some garlic, shallots, peppercorn, salt and sugar. Add some soy, pound them till they're a coarse paste, and then soak our boneless chicken thighs. While the chicken's absorbing our marinade, 
Let's move on to the salad. First, shave some papaya. Thinly slice some cabbage and skin and pip some lychees. Throw it all in a bowl with some Vietnamese mint and coriander and toss to mix those flavours around. Next, a Nam Jim topping for the dish. Some garlic, chilli and coriander root and pound until it's a paste. Mix it with a splash of fish sauce, lime juice and some palm sugar. The chicken's been marinating for a few hours, it's time to fire up the barbecue. On they go. They're cooking the meat through and waiting till the outside is nice and brown. Back inside now, slice it up into thin strips. Add some cashews to our salad for some extra crunch and then it's time to dish up. You know, I'm impressed with this. This looks great. Let's see what it tastes like. Come on! That is good. See a Tony of fight. I'm now the resident chef. After bobbing around in salt water for hours, I could use a sugar boost. And I can't resist a visit to Taffy's on the Marlston waterfront. So this is the raw product, isn't it? It is, yeah. What's in here? Sugar, water, salt. 18 years ago, retired school teacher Sam Morris came up with a plan to bring this chewy American candy, known as saltwater taffy, to Australia. Now you'll see it's changing colour. It's going milky white. So the sugars are stretching. So he went back to the shop he bought his first saltwater taffy from as a kid. And the lady who had opened the shop in 1953 in Gatlinburg was still running it in 1999. 85 years old, I'm a corker of a lady, and she took me back to her office and she went to her safe. And she pulled out this brown piece of paper and she says, Hey, honey, I think you're going to need this. And I looked at it, couldn't believe it. It was the original recipe. It was like Harlan Sanders handing over the 11 secret herbs and spices. Now, Taffy's is still the only place in WA where you can see this stuff being made. We're the oldest taffy manufacturer in Australia. The whole process is pretty cool to watch. This machine was built almost a hundred years ago, specifically for the purpose of wrapping pieces of taffy, 120 of them per minute. Taffy's also sells other American candies and chocolates like turtles, bear claws and buttersnap. All made on the shop floor and all too tempting. Now I can't promise there'll be any left to share by the time I get home. So our 30 minutes are up and these little guys are ready to come out of the oven. We're going to pull this out, get them out of that hot water and let them set in the fridge for about four hours. While our kindins are setting in the fridge, we have plenty of time to knock together this pineapple, blueberry and orange scented little salsa. The trick to getting this salsa just right is actually cutting your fruit nice and small so it just sits on the side. You can have it the little mouthfuls of kindin. And into the bowl, we're going to add just enough orange zest to scent the salad mix. And now we'll just fold that through and that is almost finished. So we've just flipped these little guys out and how cute do they look? From here, all we need to do is get a little bit of our pineapple salsa and then a couple of little blueberries to top and then to finish, toasted shaved coconut. A little bit of Brazil from me to you. I look forward to seeing you next week. For more great ideas and recipes, see Fresh in the Today Lift Out of the West Australian on Thursday. Eating out this week? Here's our top picks. In the hills, the historic Chidlow Tavern offers great restaurant meals and tasty pub favourites in a cosy country setting. If it's Asian food you're craving, Jasmine Thai in Mandra was a finalist in this year's Gold Plate Awards. Delicious, authentic food right on the boardwalk. For modern Australian fine dining at its best, try Clark's of North Beach and choose from a tasting or a la carte menu prepared by a multi-award winning chef. South of the river, Johnny's Burger Joint in Canningvale offers a great range of gourmet American style burgers and the servings come big. For seafood, steak, pizza and more, with stunning views over the water, you can't go past the Bayview Bar in Bunbury. Family friendly, with fantastic service. And further south in Margaret River, Swings Tap House and Kitchen are open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, serving simple rustic food that's locally sourced. And there are our tips for the week. Enjoy. 
This could be my masterpiece. That looks good. That's really colourful. Looks good, huh? Yeah. Barbecued Vietnamese chicken thighs with a um, really spicy sambal on top. Give that a go. That yeah. is really good. I'm impressed. Thank you know, you. You've done a really good job. Thank you. I brought you back something. Happy. Yeah. Can we have this with our dinner? Yeah, we Bit dessert of... before dinner. You can't have dessert before dinner. I'm breaking the rules. <laughs> That's good. It is. That's good. That is really good. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Fresh TV. So dolphins, how did you go? It was awesome. There were two babies there. Mm -hmm.